The VR Report Podcast with David Gino. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is David Gene O from The VR Report, and I have a very special guest, Suzanne Hospinger. Suzanne, how are you? Perfectly fine, thanks. How are you, David? I'm doing fantastic, Suzanne. Thanks for asking. I've been stoked about our interview because Hull Light is really changing the game of how industries use XR by providing powerful streaming solutions to visualize and interact with complex 3D data in real time across any device. But before we begin, can you share with our audience your origin story? Sure. So I'm Suzanne. I'm originally a physicist, so came quite a long way from physics to operations. But basically, I was studying physics at that time in 2015 still, when my colleagues and I were talking, we wanted to do something on our own. We just were waiting for the right idea. And then we found the press release from HoloLens at that time, and we saw the video, and all the four of us were just like, we have to do this now. We all worked in the industry parallel to university. We saw how much data there was, how much knowledge. And we just wanted to take this data and bring it directly to the people. Not hide it in the screen, but really use the new tech to bring it to the people, help them interact with them. And we just saw the idea and we jumped on it. And I think three weeks later, there was Hololight. So that's cool, you come from a physics background because in XR, People are interacting with 3D environments and they may have interaction with virtual objects within these 3D environments that have to have real world physics attached to them to make it more believable. So Hall Light, the problem that you're solving is to be able to stream these high fidelity 3D assets that also may include a lot of data sets and different data to you know basically make it very hard to work with. And you're not having to worry about processing that all locally on your on your hard drive, but it can be done on the cloud. So then you're able to then stream this content to your virtual reality headset or your high-end PC or even on a tablet. Would you say that's the main focus for Hall Light is to be able to have that efficiency for streaming high fidelity 3D content? We've come a bit farther since that, luckily. On one side, the streaming with the focus, focus of bringing the data in the real format, in the original sizes to the devices and to the users in the end, but we also added on top our streaming platform where we basically can collect all the XR use cases within one enterprise and give them the chance to have this one single source of truth for XR where they can connect with their different devices, no matter if it's a VR glass, an AR glass or MR glasses or even some tablets or other handheld devices and basically directly stream all their different XR use case applications directly to the, to the different devices. So it's now more about security, performance, efficiency, but also just scalability. That's fascinating, Suzanne. It sounds like Hololite has really expanded its capabilities beyond just streaming, so I really appreciate that. So with all these advancements, how does your SDK empower developers to create these diverse and scalable XR experiences for these different devices? So with our SDK for streaming, you can basically stream any XR application. You can do basically everything you want to do with the device as long as the devices support you. We are usually fine with that. You just have to add in your application our streaming technology. By doing so, we basically can enable all different use cases. It doesn't matter if it's maintenance, support, if it's design reviews, or if you go into some fancy marketing applications. You can basically do whatever. It doesn't matter for the technology itself. The same with our streaming, uh, with our streaming platform. You, we can host all the different applications on there. It doesn't matter. There's no limits for the creativity of the app developers. Suzanne, it's clear from our conversation that Hololight is making some significant strides in XR, especially in enterprise. With all this momentum, it's no surprise that you've also raised over $12 million. How do you see this funding accelerating your goals? And is there any exciting news or upcoming developments that you can share with us? I think the biggest news basically were the announcement of the Omniverse NVIDIA integration. So you can directly pull in your Omniverse data and work directly with your digital twins. But also, of course, we went live with our streaming platform Hub, which was announced at AWE just a couple weeks ago. And also our ISV partner program, where we onboarded different ISVs with their XR use cases onto Hub. 
was also announced and also already realized in the first stages. Congratulations, Suzanne, on your NVIDIA relationship. Hololite and NVIDIA's Omniverse seem to complement each other, particularly in tackling the challenges of viewing complex 3D models without processing constraints. But how does the collaboration between Hololite and Omniverse enhance the user experience? And what unique advantages does the partnership bring to the table? So Omniverse itself, it's more kind of, it's not AR ready already. There's not this finished application, not the infrastructure to bring it directly into your different XR devices. So basically we are just connecting to it and you can, like you know it with SharePoint, where you just directly can work with the original PowerPoint presentation your colleague prepared. Same with the Omniverse data with the digital twins, just you can pull it directly into XR. Suzanne, after hearing about how Hololite integrates with Omniverse, it really paints a clear picture for me of how complementary your both platforms are. Thanks for that. There are many Hololite customers that find a lot of value using your platform, and I've been doing a lot of research lately on the AEC space, the architectural engineering construction industry. And there's one company that uses Hololite. They're called Clonit, and it's a customer of yours doing some really interesting things around construction especially around building reinforcements with concrete. They use your platform to visualize the building process with real blueprints and with digital objects, they're then able to use AI to validate and correct reinforcements during the building process. What are some of your favorite Hololite use cases today? So to be honest, to pick this, this one use case is really, really hard. But I would probably take the cases like we have with our hub customers, who are the, how they are using it, because they basically have all these different use cases. They have their remote support, they have their maintenance, they have the training, they have all the different stages of their product lifecycle with all the different use cases combined in our platform. And to see this potential, also how they deal with it on, the, on their own needs. One customer has it on their own, own server infrastructure because they say, hey, we have high security data. The other says, hey, no, I'm fine with AWS and have everything hosted there. But still they have all the different use cases you could ever imagine combined on one, pla on, on one spot. So I'd probably choose the whole concept as a favorite use case. It's really fascinating to hear about how Hololite is being used in various industries. Building on that, I see a lot of potential of integrating AI into AR and VR, particularly in areas like prototyping, where Hololite's technology already adds significant value. We know that prototyping in digital environments can be more effective and efficient, especially when collaboration is involved. Uh, with AI being such a game changer in modeling and data input, do you see a trend in AI-driven XR use cases, particularly in enterprise settings? So the prototyping use case is still a huge driver for the whole enterprise XR scenery, but there are so many more use cases now already. Just imagine how many companies are already using AR and VR for training. If you onboard new employees, new workers on your factory hall, you don't want to stop the machines for them to make several runs, run throughs how, how things work. But having some PowerPoints with pictures what you're supposed to do, it's a complete different thing. You don't know how big they are, you don't know where they're positioned in terms of you, but also if you don't train them well, the risk of injuries and accidents is way too high. So several companies are already training their new employees with AR or VR and having them build up some kind of routine and some confidence with their own products. On the other side, just simple maintenance tasks and support tasks. If your machine breaks down, or for example, for at home, if your printer breaks down and the wrong part gets stuck somewhere in, usually the images and pictures on these guidelines and support pages, to be honest, I never figure out where it's supposed to be. But for especially enterprise areas with the, this very expensive machineries, people can just put on some AR glasses, overlay the information and see, hey, there's that screw I need to turn. That, that's the part I need to fix. You don't have to dig through the whole machinery to find part X, Y, Z. So there are so many more now use cases. And to be honest, several of our customers regularly find new use cases and ideas. And it's always impressive to see what kind of concepts they, they find and where they can create even more benefit. Thanks, Suzanne. I really appreciate that example you mentioned about training and fixing a printer using XR. 
It's an experience. It's a challenge that we all face trying to follow 3D instructions on a 2D screen. I recently had to do that to put open a garage opener, and it was a, it was a nightmare. And Meta recently showcased their new AI model Llama, which is multimodal, meaning that it can understand bo- both voice and visual input, making the device like their Ray-Ban smart glasses much more intuitive and also more interactive. If AR glasses can now see and understand the world through camera sensors, it just opens up a whole new possibility around training, around education. How do you see AI being integrated in VR and AR glasses to create more immersive and effective training or operational experiences today? With AI and XR basically are natural matches to each other. Just creating new models, creating new products, creating new trainings because AI, you can use it directly to track, hey, most employers struggle with that task. You can adjust it accordingly in the training materials directly for the next ones or already the ones who are using it right now to make it more easy. So it's basically a natural match. You can add it to kind of any use case because you can just improve the whole experience for all the users on continuous base. That's cool. Having an AI training scenario that not only understands mistakes, but also sees what's happening in real time is a game changer. It's like having a, it's like having a teacher who can instantly give feedback, but without needing to be there physically. And before, AI couldn't really help much because it lacked the ability to see what you're doing and respond in the moment. But now with visual understanding and voice feedback, you can work hands-free, especially if you're on a factory floor and you don't need to flip through manuals or scroll on a screen. You just ask and the AI responds and finally bringing that real world value to AI that was missing before. Have you seen other enterprise customers excited about these features? So voice input is for several use cases of our customers I've seen quite essential. Just imagine when working with digital prototypes or making already kind of test runs, how you can assemble things while you basically move your hands in the model and you can basically just tell the device, hey, capture my hand position right now, please. So I can then afterwards trace back my movements to see was I somewhere in the model? Did I, did I collide with some of the objects? Is this physically possible for me to assemble? But as soon as you have your hands basically in the model or basically your hands on working with it, you don't have any hand how to pull the trigger or put in, uh, to get to any input. So it's just an easy way for people to interact with the data and with the devices. I really like that example of what you gave regarding an AI understanding your hand movements, which is key to understanding this whole new sea change, this, this topic of the fourth industrial revolution that we're getting into which is that these technologies aren't evolving alone. The example that you shared, these technologies are being integrated to make systems smarter and more efficient. And this is huge for productivity because we're starting to work with systems that really get what we're doing and why, which can really change the way we train and develop our workforce. What do you think are the biggest challenges for enterprise companies to adopt XR in their workflows today? The biggest challenge is to really understand what the customers are doing. It's not about what features they really want to use, but especially customers who are a bit on the beginning of the XR journey, you really have to understand what's their use case. What are they planning to achieve with the, with their, with the, with the software and the use case itself? So you can really support them in the best way and not get lost on some kind of feature set or some p- image you created in your own mind, but the customer itself definitely wants to go in a complete different direction. So the hardest part in the beginning really is to understand and really walk through the whole use case with the customer and understand what they want to do. Yeah, I agree with you. The biggest hurdle for XR adoption, specifically for enterprise, are we building the right things for productivity and for enterprise? It's intrinsic to go through discovery to find out what customers really want and what their use cases are. And you're right, without defining goals and listening to what the customer's needs are, you might be building features or products that you just can't replicate for other companies to want to buy. Switching up, what are your predictions for the XR industry? So what I see, I think, is basically all the people are moving on. XR is already integrated in enterprises, and I don't think it will go away soon. So people are 
rolling out use cases, they are growing their use cases, they are finding more and more use cases where they can get more efficient, where they can get faster, where they can onboard people easier, where they can skip travels. And XR is a main part for the next few, for the future, for the enterprises, and I think we all should be ready for that. I totally agree. This really feels like the turning point we've been waiting for. The hardware, the software, the industry support are all finally aligning to make XR more accessible and valuable for enterprises. With all these advancements, like the ability to manage devices internally and being more affordable, more efficient, XR is becoming more viable for businesses. Now that we're on the cusp of broader adoption, what are some key points that Hololite is most excited about? So our future plans definitely are onboarding more partners for our hub platform. So having more and more partners means having more and more use cases and more potential customers and more markets you can reach and also onboarding the new devices. So with the market right now, there's so much movement going on on the hardware side. So we definitely want to keep up with the hardware market to onboard on time all the devices the enterprise market really needs. If you want to look into XR Streaming or our streaming platform, check out our website and don't shy away from contacting me on LinkedIn. Suzanne, it was a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for having me, David.